Well, good morning or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For this week's video, I'm going to build a small diorama to fit in the corner of a client's O scale 3 rail layout. Now, although it's only a small diorama, the process is the same regardless of the size, and also for the most part, regardless of scale as well. So, the video should be of use to the majority of my viewers. So, anyway, without further ado, let's just jump right in and get busy. Here is a sketch that the customer sent me with the sizes. We've got 22 inches, 22 and 29 and a half inch radius around there. And there's a structure to go in this corner, but it's a rather fragile structure. So rather than bring it out into the workshop, I have just drawn around it on a piece of cardstock to use that as a template. That way I can't break the actual structure. Now this is a 30 inch radius template, because I don't have a 29 and a half, but since I have to cut it back to allow for the plaster carving, I'm just going to make the allowance for that extra half an inch by overlapping the edge. And then once I've drawn around that, it'll be approximately on the cut line. Well, it took me two attempts to get it right but I got the corrected dimensions yesterday. I've made another one and now it looks a lot better than it did before. It's a lot closer to the sketch proportionately. Bearing in mind, of course, that there is still three quarters of an inch that I've cut off around here to allow for the plaster carving along that edge. So now that I'm happy with the sizes, I'm just gonna get all that glued together and I'll be right back. Now you may recall I did an experiment with glue in this phone together with a product called Gripper and the results are very successful so I'm going to use the same thing again. Here's an old two inch paintbrush which I can throw away afterwards. And I'm just going to slap on a nice thick layer on the mating surfaces. For some reason that wants to slide, so I'm going to put a nail in it. Alright, that will hold that so it doesn't slide to, to the wrong place. Well, I've left it to go hard overnight. And today I'm going to shape the rough landforms. I have a couple of sketches here. It's showing it in block form and approximate elevations of what he wants it to end up looking like. Let's get rid of the bricks. For carving, I have my drywall saw, a knife, and the multi-tool. And I will probably use all three of these before the job is out. Now the sketches show a drop-off on the front porch. So some of the foundation is going to be visible. And he doesn't want me to spend a lot of time building it. He just wants me to have the exposed foam colored to look like a stone or concrete base. So that it doesn't get chipped, I'm going to give myself about a quarter of an inch all the way around and then I'll come back and trim it later. Now because I'm going to be doing rock carvings along the edge, I need to get some plaster gauze covering it to start with. I've probably got enough here in this partial roll. I bought another roll out just in case. I'm not going to cover the whole area with it, but I am going to use the gripper as a backing because plaster doesn't stick to the foam very well. The sculptor mold is a different story. That sticks quite well, but I'm still going to paint it with the gripper anyway. Now I've laid it out on this plastic bag so that I don't glue it to the plywood.
but I'm all set up today to get the rock carving done around the front edge that faces the railroad. Before I do that, however, the customer has asked me to cut this end off at an angle, so I'm going to do that first. I'm going to start by cutting through the plaster cloth with a knife before I hack at it with a saw because I don't want to tear it apart. And I can discard this piece. Now, I'm not going to paint this with the Glidden Gripper like I did before because that will be the end of today's progress. So I'm just going to put some more plaster cloth over it. And I don't have to let that plaster set before I continue. I can just go straight ahead and start with the rock work. The plaster I'm using today is called Perfect Plaster and it's sold by Hobby Lobby and maybe a few other places as well. Usually I buy plaster of Paris and that sets up a lot faster. Here I'll find I have a lot more working time. Perfect plaster costs a little more than the, than the POP, but it's nice to work with. I need to go away now and come back in a few minutes because this is still way too wet to start carving. Now before I go in today, I'm also going to get the initial wash colours on this. And I use these cheap apple barrel paints from Walmart. Mainly I'm using black and burnt umber. But I'm also going to use a little bit of a colour they call chocolate bar, which is a much more reddish brown. And I like that for highlights. Notice how all these are dark colours. I will lighten it with the dry brushing later. But I've mixed myself up a thin wash. But even that, if I slap that onto the dry plaster, it's going to be way too dark. So what I have to do is spray it with water. I need to get it completely soaked. And then I start with just a, small, a fairly small amount of the paint to start with. And some more water. And I let it go into all the cracks. I don't want a huge amount of paint lying on the surface. I can always come back and add some more colour later, but once it's on, it's difficult to take it off. And I might have got my paint too thin, but that's okay. As I said, I can always add more. And you can see how much redder that is. Notice how here I'm just putting a few random spots on. 
I don't want too much of it, even though the red colour will largely be covered up later. And I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. Well, I've left this rock work overnight. In fact, it's already the afternoon of the next day. I was planning on putting the dry brushing on today, but it still feels damp. So I guess I'm going to hold off on that. But I am going to do the sculpture mold now. So let me just put the camera in the tripod. It's probably not in the same place it was yesterday. And one of those dogs is not mine. Just came over to play with mine. I've put the rest of the sculpture mold in the bucket. I do have some more, but I don't think I'm going to use it. I think this will be enough. Just put a little bit of water in there. And not too much. And what I'm also doing, I'm mixing the paint directly in the sculpture mold. water in here because then I'm going to have to open the other box of sculpture mold. You don't really need to, to wet the plaster down for this, it sticks pretty well to anything. And I like to put this over pretty much the whole area that's not rock because this gives an acceptable texture for dirt whereas the plaster cloth is not. Well, the batteries in the camera expired while I was filming, so I had to finish it without you. Anyway, the whole base has now been covered with sculptor mould, except the bits that are going to be rock outcrops. I'm just going to leave that to dry, and then tomorrow I should be able to dry brush the rocks and also finish the ground cover. So don't go away, I will check in with you later. Well, it's taken me a while to get to the point where I can dry brush these rocks. With the amount of rain that we've had over the last few weeks, there was just too much humidity in the workshop and it just wasn't drying. So I brought it inside and now working in my basement. I couldn't bring it in any earlier because I had a big batch of fast tracks turnout spread all over the place. Anyway, the main colors that I use for dry brushing are a brown oxide and at this point it's called granite gray, but any pale gray will do. And then I cut it with white towards the end as well for the final very light dry brush. If you happen to find a cream colour, such as an antique white, that will also be a, a very good final dry brush colour. But since I want the rocks to be mostly grey, I start by doing the brown dry brush, because most of that gets, then gets covered by the grey. If I started with the grey, most of it would be covered by the brown. It may sound counterproductive, but always do the least prevalent colour first. And with the brown, I don't go over everything because I want some of it to be browner and some of it to be grayer. I want, I want the, to vary the color somewhat. Now, although this is one of the quickest parts of the project, it makes a huge difference. Now, when I had a closer look at what had gone before, I don't think I put a heavy enough wash on because some of the gullies are not as dark as I would like them to have been. So I'm going to do the, the first couple of dry brush coats and then I'm going to put another wash on before I come back and finish it. And I think this is the leftover wash from the previous application. So I'm just going to use that. I have to make sure I wet it first, otherwise it will just sit on the surface and I don't want that to happen. I've never done the wash after the dry brushing before. So this basically is an experiment for me. I've heard other people have done it. 
So obviously it's a technique that works, it's just something I need to experiment with. And what better project to, to experiment with than a small one like this, where it's only a few minutes at a time. And although the overall effect is now a little on the dark side, I think that is better already. Once that's had time to completely dry, I'll come back and repeat the previous step. Well, after a lot of delays, I have finally got ready to do the ground cover on this diorama. The problem I was having is with the structure. I have to make sure that I don't glue it down to the scenery. Now, normally, in a situation like this, what I would do is build the foundation as part of the scenery and have the walls removable. But unfortunately, the structure was already built with the floor an integral part of it. So hopefully the plastic that I've used is thin enough to allow the ground cover to go right up to the foundation edges without gluing the building. Here are two jugs of dirt that I have dug up from my backyard. This one I have run through a tea strainer, so it's nice and fine. And this I will use for the road. And this is the other stuff that wouldn't go through, and I will dump that down everywhere else. It has a few stones and twigs and all sorts of debris in it as well. First thing I have to do is to paint full strength white glue on the areas that are getting the dirt. Now I have some water here, which I'm dipping the brush into because it makes the glue a lot easier to spread. Now I'm going to spread the fine dirt on the road. And now let's put the coarse stuff everywhere else. Now I'm just going to throw a few different colours of ground foam together and mix those up. I'm going to start with all the same colours that I use on the trees. Now note how I am not mixing up very well and making sure that it's still variable. put it down all, all over the dirt, making sure that I don't cover all of the dirt. I still want some of it showing through. And now what remains to do is to glue it in place. For that what I'm going to do is heavily dilute white glue with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Normally I do this in a couple of different steps but I have this old spray bottle and what I'm going to try to do is put the glue straight in the bottle. Now normally I would mix the scenic cement one part glue, one part alcohol and three parts water but for this application I've re reversed the proportions and I've gone with three parts alcohol and only one part water. Still going to have to get a mist spray out first. I was trying to save a step but didn't quite work.
you know, this spray bottle is not giving me much of a mist. It's more of a jet. Okay, so putting the glue in the spray bottle didn't work. I just have to go back to drizzling it on. It was worth a try. Now I may get ruts running down this road and that I guess doesn't do any harm because a real road on this hill would have ruts down it. And the greenery that I've displaced onto the road I will just pick off with tweezers later. Well I have left this overnight. Actually I left it an extra day as well because I was busy yesterday and there's lots of moisture to, uh, to evaporate. I will probably need some touching up around the edge of the building. And before I do that I've got to let this glue dry because it's all over it. I must admit, I didn't see that coming, otherwise I would have come down here last night and pulled the structure off so that I could continue now. Anyway, I'm going to at least turn this over, give it a tap. Hopefully everything will have glued itself down nicely. And nothing is falling off. So that means everything's glued properly. I'm reasonably happy with that. Anyway, while that glue was drying, I haven't been idle. If we take a step around the other side of the table, we'll see that I have been building trees to go on there. They are constructed using my standard methods. I presented them a couple years ago in a how-to video building deciduous trees from furnace filter. These are built exactly the same way, except that the base armatures came from a different kind of tree. Although they may look very similar in color, especially in the not so good light of the basement, I use three slightly different base colors and much lighter green as a highlight. So by the time I got them together, you should be able to see a slight variation in colour. There are 12 trees here, that's too many for the diorama. We're aiming for about six, but because the shapes are kind of unpredictable, I wanted to make more so that we have a good choice of which tree to put where. I can figure out which ones fit best, and then he'll just have a few extra trees to plant elsewhere on his layout. It's time to have another go at fixing the ground cover around the base. And you might not be able to see it in the camera, but what I've done now is I've masked the edges by wrapping clear tape underneath and slightly up the walls on all sides. It's basically the same as what I did with the plastic bag, but this is a lot more controlled. The plastic bag left two bigger gaps. And I'm going to have another go at filling in the ground cover around the edge. Now, since weeds tend to grow up the sides of structures when they're not maintained, I'm not going to use any more dirt. I'm just going to put foliage material around there. I decided to just use the same ground foam I did elsewhere. I've just applied it with this tool here. It's actually a clay carving tool, but it also makes a good spoon applicator. And now what I'm going to do is use an eyedropper to put glue accurately along there. What I'm doing now is putting 70% isopropyl alcohol on the ground foam to soak it. That will allow the dilute glue to soak in a lot better. Actually, one more thing. Where the road butts up against the foundation, I'm going to put some greenery in there as well because weeds will tend to grow up in that area. I'm reasonably happy with that.
and I'm actually very happy with the way this turned out. I've already pulled it up once and I've started peeling the tape off. There's a few places where the glue got underneath it, so I had to be careful. And now I'm just going around picking the tape away. When all that's off, I will offer it back up again and see if we have an acceptable joint. Let's go around all the way with the camera so you can see what it looks like on the other sides. This is the side that is facing the viewer. And that's not bad. All that remains to be done is to plant the trees in the diorama. I made a dozen of them and that's way more than I need. We've been talking about putting around about six on here. But when it comes to deciduous I always make extra trees because I want choices regarding the shape of tree to put in. And I think we can call that done. Well here is the diorama installed on the customer's three rail O-scale railroad. We're just gonna run a train by it just to make sure that we have sufficient clearance. Loads of space. Well that's all for this week. There will be a part two to this video where I'll take care of the repairs and upgrades to the structure. I don't know if I'm going to release that next week, but it will be soon. So I'm just going to sign off here and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Alright. <coughs> cut this bit out. Even after cutting it, I can't get a, I can't get my fingernails in there. And I don't want to wreck the resealability of this bag because I'm not going to be using the whole lot. Oh, man. I don't think I've cut enough off. <clears throat> I need 
these scissors are about as sharp as the average tennis ball. Maybe it'll open now. I guess I should have made an announcement at the start. Step one is opening the bag of plaster and then we'll get on with step two next week. Oh, come on, man. This is not going on camera. <clears throat> right, finally. That's it for this week. Next week I'll start with pasta work. And you don't really need... Oh crap. We definitely don't need to do that. 